A recent announcement of funding from the Ministry of Primary Industries will develop a new information system to help shape our genetics powering New Zealand's multi-billion dollar dairy sector. The world leading system will be used to record and collate vital data on a range of important traits of dairy cows which will fast track genetic gains for traits important to farmers using of course artificial insemination rather than the current archaic system of uh, collecting this data. The man behind the decisions of where MPI's sustainable food and fibre futures dollars goes is the Director of Investment Programs, Steve Pino, who joins us now. Good evening, Steve. Good evening, Sarah. Steve, before we crack into it, we're talking about uh, cartoonists. We've had a lot of uh, wonderful ones across uh, a lot of the New Zealand newspapers over the decades. Is there any ones that sort of spring to mind that are favourites uh, that you can oh, name? I, I love the Bogor cartoons. I'm trying to remember the name of the, uh, the artist, but um, yeah, the, the hedgehog and the, um, and the woodsman are yeah, great, funny cartoons. <laughs> there is so, so many. So um, fantastic. Thank you so much, Steve. Steve, firstly, we we're just talking there. Oh, I do want to get deeper into the sustainable food and fibre futures. There's a lot of mm. name changes have happened over the time. Yes. But in, in the wider uh, ability to pump spending into, of course, um, research and development in our sector. Mm. But let's talk about this particular program, a million dollars going into uh, our prize dairy genetics program. Could you give us an overview of where that's going to go to? Great. So this um, program is working with the breed societies who breed some of our specialist um, breeds in New Zealand. So um, the partner with the program is the Holstein Frisian Association, and they've got five different dairy breed associations that they are working with. And so the intention of the project is to basically rebuild the platform that they use to collate information about the traits of the animals that they are breeding. And so with our assistance, they're able to, um, one, rebuild the system they've got, which is 20 years old and getting a bit creaky. And um, also they're going to expand it so they can include more traits and record more information about the animals and um, integrate it into a national database, um, which is used to um, collect the information on all of the dairy cows in New Zealand so that that's available for researchers and breeders and farmers in terms of um, improving genetics and um, understanding of our overall dairy herd. So um, I, I must admit, I don't have a huge background in dairy compared to sheep and beef. Is this similar to um, SIL or breed plan in terms of sheep and beef? So this is really, um, it's a database to be able to um, capture the information. And so it uh, doesn't actually hold the genetics, I guess, um, but it's uh, yeah, just a, a tool to make the information about all of the in, uh, different animals available. Okay, wonderful. And uh, how, how is it in terms of collaboration? There's obviously, as you said, five different companies that are coming together. Uh, yeah. That's actually quite significant. Yeah, it's really important, I think, that we um, are enabling our wider industry to collaborate together. And what this project means is that all of the information that um, is available through uh, the likes of LIC, which goes into the um, national database, um, that'll be combined also with this information from the breed society. So in one place, all of the information from all of the different organisations working in genetics will be available. I have a question coming here from Bruce, Steve. Will all the data be freely available to any farmer? Um, yes, so uh, the data will be going into um, the database, which is managed by a subsidiary of Dairy NZ. Um, so that's called the um, Dairy Industry Good Animal Database. Um, and so there's, uh, in there's information online about how people are able to get access to information from it. I was just thinking, just another good old acronym to throw into the primary yeah, I, sector. I was, I was trying to avoid saying DGAD. DGAD, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. No, um, as any people working in our sector will understand. And I have a real pet hate. I like to ex uh, speak them out, these acronyms that we use so freely that people don't really know. So that is the Dairy Industry Good Animal Database. Uh, a new system that we're discussing here that MPI's Sustainable Food and Fibre Futures Fund has well, just put a million dollars into. Well, just to, just to um, uh, clarify that, um, the Dairy Industry Good Animal Database is one that already exists. Oh, my apologies. Them, and it's the system that the breed societies use. We're helping them to rebuild theirs and make sure that they're able to plug into the Dairy Industry Good Animal Database so that the, um, the national database has a full set of information 
And so the breed, breeding societies have a really good system that they can use. Steve, let's talk about the this particular fund, the SFF F, F, and how it has been going. $40 million a year up in terms of grants and investments into the sector. It must yes. be a challenge in your role as the Director of Investment Programs in terms of deciding what does and doesn't get funded. Uh, it's actually a, a real privilege. I think um, I'm in a really lucky position where I can see many of the applications that are coming to us with these really interesting projects where people are looking for assistance. Um, so the programs um, uh, or SFF Futures has been um, running for about 18 months now. Um, the very first project that was announced, uh, we um, had a, a launch of that project, I think back in August last year. Um, that's in the area of seaweed. And so they have been um, investigating with a seaweed that is growing on mussel lines in um, the Coromandel. Um, a seaweed called wakame, whether that's of uh, suitable quality to sell in Japan. That's um, That project's actually finished already. Um, and they've been able to show actually that they can get quality seaweed that's um, suitable quality for the Japanese market. The next challenge is um, looking at the costs of that and seeing if they can deliver it in a cost-effective way. Um, so as well as that project, um, we've now got uh, 32 projects which are um, up and running. Um, so those projects have got, uh, we've made a commitment of about $12 million to those um, projects. There's about another $15 million that the applicants are putting into them. So already we've got quite a sizable um, portfolio of interesting projects going. What's your thoughts on the differing between the primary growth partnership of co-investment versus the uh, style of the sustainable food and fibres future? Um, so SFF Futures, we still um, have co-investment as an important attribute of it. Um, I think it makes a big difference when you've got um, an organisation or a community group that's actually putting some of their own resources into a project. And then if we can just get behind them and help them um, make the project be more successful or deliver more, that can be um, a really impactful way of working with them. So Sustainable Food and Fibre Futures, or SFF Futures as we call it, it's really combined um, some of the best parts of what was the Primary Growth Partnership, where we were working on very large programs, typically at an industry level, and the Sustainable Farming Fund, which had been running for many years and was very successful, working at more at a community and catchment level on smaller projects. And so through SFF Futures, we've um, taken the best of both of those and we're able to invest in a broader range of projects. Uh, applied research funding how, should uh, our Crown Research Institutes have funding applied to commercial outcomes? Um, I think um, uh, I, I'm not sure I'd, I'd claim to be qualified to talk about the research that CRIs do, but um, certainly a lot of the research that um, has come out of their work, um, we've been able to work with industries and, and community groups to actually bring that out onto the farm or into, a, into the um, uh, the fishing environment to be able to um, make their research a, com a commercial reality. Um, so, for example, there's a, um, uh, some projects around uh, biosecurity um, challenges that some of our industries have where we're able to support some um, industry groups to um, pick up some research which has been done by CRIs and actually um, do the work to get some biocontrols out onto farm. We're in May, Steve. And uh, May, May, always, May, May always comes with one word, and it's called uh, the budget. Well, that's two. Uh -huh. uh, how, how well funded is this and how much more it could to be able to help grow uh, the one industry that, of course, is being underpinned to pull our economy through this situation right now? Yeah, so we have um, $40 million per year that's available for us to invest. Um, that's both to fund the existing projects which are running and also to commit to new projects which will be um, needing funding over the um, next few years. Um, we've got funding available. We're still looking for more um, good projects that we can support. And at the moment, with the um, uh, devastating impact of um, COVID-19, we're really keen to um, see projects where we can help industry and, and businesses to get back on their feet again, um, particularly where they might lead to um, uh, employment um, in areas where um, we've got people who have lost roles from other industries. Or, and also there'll be, um, because of the disruption of our local and international value chains, there'll be opportunities for companies that if they're really quick, 
um, they'll be able to get more value for the product they're, um, they're delivering or get closer to their customers and really keen to see those opportunities so that we can um, figure out if there's an opportunity for us to help. Just in passing, you just mentioned the word earlier that it's a privilege to be in your role. Uh, are you heartened by the amazing innovation of Kiwis? I think it's really cool what people come up with. There's some um, really uh, neat projects that are in our pipeline, um, doing things with plant proteins, um, different ways of um, uh, looking at aquaculture, um, looking for sort of really interesting compounds that we can get from um, some of our native plants. It's uh, yeah, there's some really innovative, um, cool, cool people out there. Thank you so much, Steve, for taking the time to join us. Uh, it's Steve Pino. He is the Director of Investment Programs at the Ministry for Primary Industries, talking there about the Sustainable Food and Fibre Futures, uh, which, of course, is a, a fantastic grant that is going into uh, our most innovative new up-and-coming startups in the food sector, as well as, of course, uh, our environmental research. This is Sarah's Country.